We can keep talking and settle in. Light up. world from love ya la la ya la ya la 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 you will build this world from love ya da da la da ya la 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 and if we build this world from love ya la la ya la ya la 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 you can sing with me then we will have a world of love those aren't the lyrics <laughs> ya la la ya la ya la 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 olam the world chesed yibane olam chesed yibane try the second ya la la ya la ya la 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 that's your answer Olam chesed yibane Ya la la ya la ya la 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 Olam chesed yibane Ya la la ya la ya la 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 Olam chesed yibane Ya la la ya la ya la 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 I will build this world from love Ya la la ya la ya la 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 Try it quietly and you will build this world from love Ya la la ya la ya la 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 Chesed yibane, ya la la, ya la, ya la la la. Olam chesed, olam chesed yibane. Three words, three words. Ya la la, ya la, ya la la la. Shana Tova. Feels good, right? It's almost as if I don't even need to intro these holidays. Some of us have been waiting to be in this space with this feeling, with that voice for years. How many years? It's been three years. It's been three years since I'm knocking on your door. <laughs> I actually wrote down here, let Julie scat through the intro. <laughs> There's a few things I want to go over really quickly. For those of you I haven't gotten to meet, my name is Rabbi Daniel Scherer, but I actually feel like I know most of these faces, and that is truly the power of community. But while we're talking about community, there's a few things I'm going to ask. The first, there are only 350 machsors in this room. I promise we will fix that for Yom Kippur. There is a bin somewhere. I'm thinking Santa Monica High School. So if some of you don't mind sharing the ones in the pews, if we can get a couple people to raise their hands, we can give some books to the people in the middle as well. 
The second is that many of you probably walked in here with a small rectangular device. You've heard me talk about this for bar and bat mitzvah. It is magical. It has all the answers to the entire world in the palm of your hands. Turn it off. If you've got a phone, turn it on silent. Oh, look at this powerful community. I love that. I can say anything. You're not listening because you're still passing books. It's beautiful. Oh, Julie, watch out. Perfect, perfect. Okay, this isn't a meet and greet, people. We're sharing machsors, and we got to get back to business. The true, the true thought of today is that we can feel the space. So I want you to do me a favor. I want you to let the space, let the feeling of the space truly wash over you. Let this be a different High Holy Days. There actually is such thing as a holy pause. It is partially what we took and we did our best. We had our live stream, we connected, we saw so many of your faces, but not all together. And now we are back in our holy sanctuary. We have enough books, don't worry. We I did a great sharing thing, Rebecca, we're good. Perfect. So let this be a different High Holy Days. Let us truly feel each prayer. And that also means that this isn't a performance. When Julie gives us the words to join, join. Sing with us. Fill this space with spirit and love. The first prayer that we're going to say together is Matovu. And then I'm going to let us go through a few prayers, really build up, connect the holiness of each one of those words. But Matovu is about the fact that I don't know how your morning started. I don't know what time you woke up. I don't know if you hit a little traffic. I don't know if a cat accidentally tore your jacket. We won't go over that too much, Julie. <laughs> I don't know what it took to get here, but what I do know is all of us are here now. Matovu ohalecha Yaakov. How beautiful are your tents, Jacob? How beautiful is it that each and every one of you with your own homes and your own stories and your own narratives are now here together. So we sing this blessing of Matovu to realize now we are a holy community working towards a very important, important cause of scaffolding, of building, of sanctifying this holy day. So we'll begin with our motto, Vu, and then we're going to go all the way through some of our most known prayers and join us along the way, because that is what fills our cup as well. Page 140 in your Oxford. Adonai Ahavti Mehon Beitecha Umikom Mishkan Kibodecha Mishkan Kudecha Israel, me 
278 or 41 in your machsor that we sent home in the last two years, we turn to the words of Baruch Hu. We rise no, for no, these no. holy words. Who gave me these miracles? Who awakens me each day? Who breaks the chains of slavery and shows me the way? Who steadies my footsteps? Who opens up my eyes? Who lifts up the fallen that we all may rise? Try this with me. That we all may rise. That we all may rise. Alana, our wonderful sound person up there. Alana, can you bring my guitar up in my monitor just a bit? Thank you, dear. There's a lot of love in this room. I learned love from my rabbi, Robert Miller. He's the guy that gave me a guitar strap when I was 16 years old. Can you imagine? And he said, don't shake your tush so much when you're up on that bima. <laughs> he said that to me. I loved him. This is a piece, uh, this is the Ve'ahafta, and this is what I wrote for him uh, many years after he showed me some wonderful lessons of love. Love Adonai, your God, with all your heart. 
Michael, join me. With all your soul and with all your mind and these words which I command you on this day shall be in your heart shall be in your heart teach them faithfully unto your children speak of them when you sit in your house when you walk by the way when you lie down and when you rise bind them for a sign upon your hand that they may be a symbol between your eyes here's where you come in write them on the doorposts write them on the doorposts of your house and upon your gates and upon your sit in your house when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise and when you rise Be in awe. If you cannot allow yourself to be in awe, you are missing the beauty of the world. You cannot capture the magnificence of this life if you walk around already knowing everything. You just can't. If you don't find enough time to be in awe, if you don't find the ways to remind yourself that you don't know everything, then you are missing out. So we have a prayer for that. We have Micha Mocha. We have a prayer that says, who is like you, God? That is our tradition's way of saying, whoa, look at this world. Look at what can be achieved. Look at what is possible. Look at the beauty of nature. Look at the achievement of mankind. Whoa. So celebrate being in awe. On page 318, we sing the words of mi chamocha. And we truly celebrate that we don't know everything. And what a gift that is. Yai, yai. Lai 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 Adonai, 
Tour Yisrael instructs us that we are about to rise for our Amidah. And our Amidah can shed so many different lessons, but the one that is loudest to me is actually the one about speaking softly. I shared this last night, but it's worth reiterating because it's truly an example of how we care for the world around us. I always tell our Bar Bat Mitzvah students, your mitzvah project doesn't have to be the most viral mitzvah project of all times. In fact, if every single mitzvah project just made a small ripple effect, that that would in fact change the world. There's other ways of changing the world. There's leaving space for others. And that is what we're going to see with our Amidah. We call it silent, that's not true. It's not silent, it's very, very quiet. It's almost a mumble. When we rise for our Amidah, when we give you a chance to say these first few blessings, and then we'll have some communal blessing too, the idea is that you are speaking loud enough to know your voice is out there. God hears that. But you're not using any extra space in the room which leaves every single voice here an opportunity to be heard. We always think that we need these grand gestures to change the world, but sometimes we just need to leave a little space. Sometimes we just have to let the person next to us know there's room for you too. So that's exactly what we're gonna show. Now that we're gathering again, we're going to show that we can create enough space for everyone. I've seen it just by people moving over, letting another person sit. The beautiful example of the prayer books right at the beginning. You are making space, so now let's symbolically show it together. We rise. We start on page 324. We will have our almost silent Amida, and then we'll have the chance to pray these sacred High Holy Day words of our Amida together. Eternal God, open up my lips softly, that my mouth may declare your glory. Work through the next 10 to 15 pages, reflect, meditate, pray, speak to God. This time is yours. Page 
We ask, Susan, James, Quincy, and Farah to come forward to open our ark for our Unitana Tokef. Unitana Tokef is a poem, and a poem that actually has a worried poet. Worried because the poet realizes that it is in our Mishnah that it says, Rosh Hashanah is the scariest day of the year. Rosh Hashanah is the year, the day in which all things terrible might happen. And this makes the poet worried. But you see, the poet finds inside of it a glimpse of hope. Hope that as we open our ark, we'll feel hope that no matter what has been done in our past, there are actually three things the sages teach that can cancel out the divine punishment. Prayer, charity, and repentance. When we sing these three words, what we're reminded is the things that can put out that positivity, that energy, that life-changing nature into this world, those are the things that also redeem our own souls. So as our ark is opened and these holy words are chanted, we realize it's not a scary day at all. It's the first of many holy challenges that we'll tackle together. Unetane tokef kedushat hayom ki hunora vehar yom uvoti nase malechu techa vei. Ellie Novik to come up and read with us on page 347 these words of Unitani Tokef. Yeah. And so let holiness arise to you, for you, God, are our sovereign. We now declare the sacred power of this day, which is the most awesome and solemn of days, when your rule is established over all and your throne set in place by the power of love, and you come forth to govern in truth. True it is that you are our judge. You alone can reprove. You alone can know. You alone are witness to all deeds. It is you who shall write, you who shall seal what is written, you who shall read, and you who shall number all souls. You alone can remember what we have forgotten. It is you who shall open the book of remembrance, but its contents shall speak for themselves, for it bears the imprint of us all, which our deeds and our lives have inscribed. And when the great shofar is sounded, a small quiet voice can be heard and the heavenly beings are thrown into fright and seized by a terrible dread. And they declare, behold, the day of judgment has arrived when even those in heaven's court are judged for none can be exempt from justice's eyes. Thank you. Take a note.
Shashana Yekatebun Uviom som kippur Uviom som kippur Yekatebun Uviom som kippur Uviom som kippur Yekatebun 350 Kama Kama ya avrun vechama vechama ibarehu mi yichyeu mi yamut mi vekitzo umi lo vekitzo mi mi vayish umi umi vamaim mi. All of these holy words are now, we take a moment of silence to let them seep in. And close your eyes, let these words wash over you. We are gifts, and we are blessings. We are history in song. We are hope, and we are healing. We are learning to be strong. 
We are words and we are stories. We are pictures of the past. We are carriers of wisdom, not the first and not the last. Lador vador nagid god lecha. Lador vador, we protect this chain from generation to generation. Lador vador, these lips will praise your name. Looking back on the journey that we carry in our hearts. From the shadow of that mountain to the waters that would part. We are blessed and we are holy. We are children of your way. And the words that bring us meaning, we will have the strength to say. Lador vador nagid god lecha. Lador vador, we protect this chain. From generation to generation, the door of our door, these lips will praise your name. The door of our door, these lips will praise your name. call Zach Shapiro to come forward in a prayer that is known for its silence, for its quiet. We find our first of three shofar blasts. We're going to break our shofar into three sets because shofar is our holy alarm clock. And most of you snooze those alarm clocks. So we're going to have a few chances to wake up, a few chances to be alerted to the moment, to be present, to be shook and awake. On page 592, we're going to do just the first third. So we'll begin by saying our blessings, and then we will hear the first third of our calls of the shofar. Join me in saying these words, and if you don't know them, amen will do. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Asher Kidshanu Sotav Vitzivanu Lishmoa Kol Shofar. Amen. And we say Eshechechianu, this prayer that it's the first time we get to hear the blasts of the shofar, and how lucky we are to hear such beautiful blasts. We say together, Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Shechechianu Vakiyamanu Vahigianu Lazman Chazet. How lucky are we that God allows us to truly be in this moment to feel and experience all that thousands of years of tradition have safeguarded, still so prevalent and relevant today. You ready? Takia Shivarim Trua Takia 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 
Shivarim Trua. Tikiya. Tikiya. Shivarim Trua. Tikiya. Beautiful. Gasher Koa. Okay, now you seem awake. The shofar worked. We've opened the ark once again. We're on to page 460. Avinu Malkenu, the sounds of our high holiday, the prayer that is saying, Our Father, our King, let this resonate differently to you. Our Father, our King is about stating a relationship, a trusting relationship. So today, translate that. Translate that however you best see fit. Choose the loving relationship. Choose the person that you trust, the relationship that you authentically believe and trust the guidance, and insert that as your translation for Avinu Malkinu. <laughs> Shema koleinu, avinu malkeinu, chatanu lifanecha, avinu malkeinu, hamol aleinu, ve'aol aleinu. Vetapeinu Avinu Malkeinu Kale Deve Vehere Vera of Meleinu Avinu Malkeinu Lehe You may be seated. You're going to stand up again in a few minutes, I promise. I'll give you a moment. But your Apple watches are already telling you that, right? <laughs> you need to stand up now. <laughs> in just a moment, we'll again open the ark. We'll again, this time, invite Torah into our midst. We'll sing the words of Adonai, Adonai. We'll use our normal call and response of Shema, Echad, Gadlu, these words you know, and then we'll have a chance to bring Torah into everyone's midst, to walk around with it. Even though this is something that we might experience any Saturday morning we come and pray, it doesn't make it any less holy. In fact, 
there's an argument to be made that it's all the more holy that we take the things that we've learned to be routine and we consistently elevate them and we treat them differently. When we get to Adonai, Adonai, we talk about 13 different attributes, an invitation to see and understand that God has all these different attributes and ways. What if we saw other people like that? What if instead of getting frustrated when someone bothers us, we seek other attributes of theirs that we can hold on to and to love? What if we saw every person as multifaceted as we are willing to recognize and see God? We'd probably hold less grudges. We'd probably carry less tension. We might still know the attributes we don't like, but we will have found the ones that we can truly connect to. That's actually our obligation as community. That's our obligation as people of faith, to recognize that there are so many different complex and interesting pieces of each of us. Those are the kinds of morals and ethics and values that we celebrate in our Torah. So we're going to ask Greg Karasik and the Albeck family to come forward to open our ark for our Torah service. Once the ark is open, we will first sing these words of Adonai, Adonai, and then we'll have a chance to begin our Torah processional. As the ark is opened, I know you only got a minute, but please rise. The ain kema asecha malchutecha malchut kol olamim umem shaltecha bechol dor vador Adonai melech Adonai malach Adonai himloch leolam voed Adonai var Rechet amo v'shalom, Adonai yivarech et amo v'shalom. Av harachamim, heiti babir n'son cha et zion. Tivnei chomot Yerushalayim. Tivne chomot Yerushalayim Ki becha levad batachnu Melech el ram venisa adon olami Vayahi bin Soharon vayomer Moshe Kuma Adonai, ve'afutsu oivecha, ve'anusu misanecha, mipanecha. Ki mitzion teitze Torah, ki mitzion teitze Torah. Udivar Adonai me. Shalayim Baruch Shenatan Torah Torah Baruch Shenatan Torah Torah Le'amo Yisrael Bikdushato Adonai, Adonai, 
El Rachum Vehanun Erecha Pahim Verab Chesed Veemet No Chesed La Lafi No Sehavon Vafesha Vehata Venake Adonai, Adonai, El Rachum Vehanu, Erech Apayim, Verav Chesed Veemet. No Tse Chesed Lalafim, No Seha Vova Fesha, Vehata Venake. Adonai, Adonai, El Rachum Vehanun, Erech Apayim Virav Chesed Veemet. No Tse Chesed Lalafim, No Se Avon Vafesha Vehata then I can. Turn on page 470. If I can ask Sherry and Michael Green to come forward. They will receive the Torah to help us carry it around the room. Milo, you can come too. You looked worried if you want. You know the help we can get. After us, Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Echad Eloheinu, Gadol Adonainu. Kadosh vino rashimo, Echad Eloheinu, Gadol Adonainu, Kadosh vino rashimo, Gadlu Ladonaiti, Un Romema Shemo, Yachta, Leha Adonai, Hagibu. is brought out to us and we celebrate with song and joy you can put your hands together thank you david well do you do on two and four or are you doing it on one and three you gotta pick one two. you're doing it on <laughs> a little more guitar <laughs> Devarim ha'olam ha'olam omein. I'll slow shadivah. One, two, three, four. I'll slow shah. I'll slow shadivarim. Shah, slow shadivarim ha'olam ha'olam omein. Keep singing, keep singing. Al Torah, the Al Avoda, the Al Milu Hasadi. Yisagoy el goy cherev, lo yilmedu od. Oh, listen to you, listen to you. Goy el goy cherev, all 
also this. Lai 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 la. Sing it loud. Lo yisa goyel goyen harem. Lo yilner duod mil hama. Lo yisa. Lo yilner duod mil hama. Eile hamdali hibi. Usanabe al nati tale, eile hamda hamda libi. Usanabe al nati tale, eile hamda hamda libi. Usanabe al nati tale. Oh, say shalom, bim rama. Your turn, your turn. Shalom, Shalom Aleinu, Be'alko Yisrael. Don't stop, don't stop. Sim, 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 Shalom, Sim, 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 Shalom, Sim. You may be seated. Torah service is a celebration of our faith. Torah service is a celebration of community. That's why we call people to Torah. That's why we are so blessed to have post B'nai Mitzvah students reading Torah for us. Because as a community, we celebrate that what we're doing is not for a one-time moment, but for a lifetime of celebration and joy. So we're going to get to celebrate. That showed up out of nowhere. Because it's good to use hand sanitizer. We're going to celebrate members of our community, both being called up for the honor as well as being called up to read. You're going to hear a lot more about different parts of our book of our values so we are going to jump right into torah torah service can be found at this point on page 476 that is where the blessings will be and then on 482 and 484 is where you'll be able to find the contents of our torah portions dana are you ready we couldn't do this without dana fine you just it's like, I got it. I'll be a, I'll be a god I, I have to say that we stand on the shoulders of our teachers, but everything I learned, I learned here at KI from wonderful teachers. Everything. So there you go. For our first Aliyah, Dashiell, I'm going to invite you up to be our Torah reader. And some people who know you, Dashiell, are going to come up to do the blessing. Ya'am du Menachem ben Yaakov Svi Vereisel Chaya Devora Bat Frida Vemika 
Chaim Svi ben Menachem Mendel Alia Rishon. We call up Susan and Mark and Andrew to do our Alia, our blessing number one. Touch your tally. Baruchu et Adonai Hamborach. Baruch Adonai Hamborach leolam ba'ed. Baruch Adonai Hamborach leolam ba'ed. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam. Asher Bachar Banu Mikal Ha'amim Benatan Lanu Et Torato. Baruch Ata Adonai No Tain Hatorah. Amen. Amen. Vadonai Pakad et Sara Kaasher Amar Vayas Adonai Lesara Kaasher Ziper Vatar Vateled Sara Avraham Bain Liz Kunav Lamo En Asher di Ber Oto Elohim Vaikra Avraham Et Shem Beno Hano Ladlo Asher Yaldalo Sara Ishak Vayamol Avraham Et Yitzchak beno ben shmonat yamim ka'asher siva oto Elohim. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech olam asher natan lanu torat emes lechaye olam natabetochenu Baruch atah Adonai, no tain ha-Torah. Amen. And though we move quickly coming up to Torah, we want you to take your time to leave Torah, to leave this myth, so you can move to the other side of Dana and stay up here for our second Aliyah. Yashar Koach. McCall, why don't you come up? McCall Green will be our second reader of Torah. And Margo, where is Margo? Margo will be called up to Torah. Ta'amod Miriam bat estalea vegershon la'alia sheni. Margo had her 90th birthday last weekend. I know, I can't help it, I'm sorry. And she heard me say that last weekend at Shabbat. It's been a lot of celebrating. Baruch Hu et Adonai Hamavarach. Baruch Adonai Hamavarach Leolam Vaed. Baruch Atah Adonai. Oh, I'm supposed to repeat that. Baruch Adonai Hamavarach Leolam Vaed. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Asher Kervanu Levodato Venatanlanu et Torato. Baruch atah Adonai, hosnet notin ha-Torah. Amen. Amen. The Avraham ben me'at shana v'hivaled lo et yitak v'no. Batomer sara tzahok asa li Elohim kal hashomea. Yitak li batomer mi milel the Avraham henika Banim Sara Ki Yaladati Ben Yizkunav. Vahiga Vahiga Dol Hayaled Vahiga Mol Vayaas Abraham Mishte Gadol Bayom 
Higamel et Yitzhak. Yasher Koach. Baruch Katar on I Eloheinu Melech Olam Asher Natan Lanu Torah Temet B'chaye Olam Natab Yitulchenu Baruch Katar Adonai Noten HaTorah Amen. You guys may be seated. Margo, you can make your way over to the other side of our bima. <laughs> Emerson. Colin Emerson both agreed to read Torah for us, and their proud parents sat right in the front row so they could watch every moment of it. For our third Aliyah, Larry and Elena share. I think I've met them once or twice before. It's my dad. <laughs> so if he messes up the portion. I'm just kidding. He taught me Torah. I'm going to give him some credit. Yeah, I'm do. Arya ben Yisrael Svi Halevi Veliba La Aliyah Shlishi. Baruch Adonai Hamvorach. Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Leolam Vaed. Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Leolam Vaed. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam. Asher Bachar Banu Mikol Hamim. V'natan Lanu Et Torato. Baruch Ata Adonai Noten HaTorah. Amen. Amen. Vatera Sera at Ben Hagar. Hamitzri Asher Yalda le Avraham Mitzahek Vatomer le Avraham Goresh. Haama Hazot Vaet Bena Kilo Yirash. Ben Haama Hazot Im Bene Im. Itzhak Vayira Hadevar Mi Bene Avraham Al Odot Beno Vayomer Elohim El Avraham Al Yira Baruch Ata Donai Eloheinu Melech Alam Asher natan lanu Torah temet Nechaye olam nata betochenu Baruch ata Adonai Noten ha-Torah Amen You may have noticed You may have noticed that we took two Torahs out of the Ark, and that wasn't by mistake. That's on purpose, because on our High Holy Days, we welcome double Torah. We say we take out twice as much Torah, and don't worry, we're not going to read twice as much Torah. I know some of you are like, wait, Rabbi, you promised us. No, it's about the idea of magnifying, of, of multiplying our holiness. And so one of the ways we do that is by welcoming twice as much Torah into our midst. And that also means that as we return the Torah to the Ark, it's twice as much of a loving act because we are making sure that two of our most sacred texts are finding a safe and holy space. If I can have Gina and Jeremy come down and Allison and David and Fred and Ora come down, we're going to lift and tithe and dress the Torah. So that means when that is done, as the Torah is lifted, I ask everyone to please rise. It is tradition at times to take your seat, seat, hang it by your pinky and hold it up this way. Some of you have seen that before. If you haven't, try it out. It's something new for the holidays. We rise as our Torah is lifted.
together. This old Hatorah, I share some Moshe, live name in a Israel, I'll be a donai, be a Moshe. Hatorah, I share some Moshe, live name in a Israel, I'll be a donai, be a little Torah dressing music. A Torah dressing music. Uh, how, how about, um, it is, mm. how about a name like <laughs> It is a tree of life to them that hold fast to it and all of its supporters are happy. It is a tree of life to them that hold fast to it. All of its supporters are happy. Shalom, 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 eitz chayim chile machazikim bahetu, meusha eitz chayim chile machazikim bahetu, mecha meusha. Our blower who is going into both services is coming back in this moment. So before that, all of you may be seated. Excellent work. You're going to stay there for a few minutes of the tour, okay? We turn on page 580, the prayer for our country. If I can ask Lisa and David to come forward and share these words, the prayer for our country. Rock and champion of Israel, please bless the state of Israel, first fruit of the flourishing of our redemption. Guard it in the abundance of your love. Spread over it the shelter of your peace. Send forth your light and truth to those who lead and judge it and to those who hold elective office. Establish in them through your presence wise counsel that they may walk in the way of justice, freedom, and integrity. Strengthen the hands of those who guard our holy land. Let them inherit salvation and life and give peace to the land and perpetual joy to its inhabitants. Appoint for a blessing all of our kindred of the house of Israel and all the lands of their dispersion. Plant in their hearts a love of Zion. And for all our people everywhere, may God be with them. And may they have the opportunity to go up to the land Cause your spirit's influence to emanate upon all dwellers of our holy land. Remove from their midst hatred and enmity, jealousy and wickedness. Plant in their hearts love and kinship, peace and friendship, and soon fulfill the vision of your prophet. Nation shall not lift sword against nation. Let them learn no longer ways of war. And let us say, 
Amen. Amen. A beautiful prayer for the state of Israel. Now the prayer for our country, page 581. Nancy Kronig. I did not get to see everyone as you were coming in. Nancy, if you'll come down and lead us in the prayer for our country on page 579. right into the microphone. Which one? This one, that one. Okay, gotcha. Have to be careful when you take a mask off when you have hearing aids. I already lost one. Oh. Sovereign of the universe, mercifully receive our prayer for our land and government. Let your blessing pour out on this land and all officials of this country who are occupied in good faith with the public needs. Instruct them from your Torah's laws. Enable them to understand your principles of justice so that peace and tranquility, happiness and freedom might never turn away from our land. Please, wise one, God of life, breath of all flesh, waken your spirit within all inhabitants of our land and plant among the peoples of different nationalities and faith who dwell here, love and brotherhood, peace and friendship. Uproot from their hearts all hatred and enmity, all jealousy and vying for supremacy. Fulfill the yearning of all the people of our country to speak proudly in its honor. Fulfill their desire to see it become a light to all nations. Therefore, may it be your will that our land should be a blessing to all inhabitants of the globe. Cause friendship and freedom to dwell among all peoples and soon fulfill the vision of your prophet. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation. Let them learn no longer ways of war. And let us say, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Yasher Koch. Several years ago, I was sitting with my daughter, Katie, my younger daughter, Katie, and she was a couple of years old and she had a bunch of balloons and she was letting them go all, letting them helium take them to the ceiling. And I sat with her and watched her in wonder as she saw these balloons go up to the ceiling and then she would pull them all down. She would pull them all down. And then she would hold on to one balloon and I watched her see these balloons, the collection, go up, but not as high, not as high. And I saw it right in her face that she wanted to hold on to that balloon, but she wanted the rest of them to also, and you, you can't, you can't hold back that balloon and then expect the rest of them to go. And so while I sat there, I said to her, mommy needs to go write a song now. <laughs> so we sang it earlier, but let's try it together. We don't even have to, it's just sing, sing, sing what you want. Who brings me these miracles? Who awakens me each day? Who breaks the chains of slavery and shows me the way? Who steadies my footsteps? Who opens up my eyes? Who lifts up the fallen that we all may rise? That we all may rise. Please rise. That we all may rise. That we all may rise. That we all may rise. Who brings me these miracles? Who brings me these miracles? Who awakens me each day? 
breaks the chains of slavery and shows me the way who steadies my footsteps who opens up my eyes who lifts up the fall in that we all may rise that we all back Zach Shapiro for our second shofar blast. These sound different from the first. Each snooze will be different because we have to awaken a different part of our soul. They have to sound a little different. On page 592, I'll say the calls again. You'll repeat and Zach will do the shofar blast. Tikiya. Shivarim. Tikiya. If you haven't already, close your eyes for this next set. I'll say the words you just repeat. Tikiya. Shivarim. Tikiya. Shivarim. Tikiya. Thank you. Yashar Koach. On page 606, we're going to be returning the Torah to the Ark. I didn't have a chance to see as everyone was coming through. I want to see our Joni and Andrew here to open the ark for us as we return the Torah. All right, yeah. As the ark is open, as we go and return each Torah to the ark, I want us to hold on to that feeling of community that we've tied to ethics and values in doing our Torah service together. Yeha <laughs> Libane Israel, am kerovo, hallelujah, hallelujah. Eitz chayim hi, lemachazikim ba, Vetom hecha meushar derachecha darchei noam v'chol netibotecha shalom hashi.
יישר כוח. You may be seated. If you need to use the restroom, stretch your legs, this is the time. Anyone got woken up a little extra early from their children, take a nap, it's okay. There's a famous teaching of the Baal Shem Tov. From every human being, there rises a light that comes straight to the heavens. And when people come together, the beam is grown brighter wider, shining more light around them. It's in many ways actually reflected in the beauty of our Havdalah candle. For each wick that you add, the light grows. It doesn't reduce oxygen from the next candle flame. No, the closer and tighter that the wicks are woven, the brighter, the larger the fire that shines. So today, I am here to tell you, shine your light. There's a real effect of being in community and the power that we have to nurture and grow the light for others. And it's not just an effect we can have on others. For the record, we can. It's also an effect that others can have on us. You see, we are creating a balance of need. We have to let community in. Otherwise, we are not tending to our light. And that light deserves to shine bright. For the record, we've all opted into this communal experience and obligation. Every time you join a congregation, a school, a job, a club, any of those times, you are now obligated to care about that community. You've taken on part of that identity, and therefore, you are now obligated to care for that vessel, to protect it. There's this theory in theology called vertical versus horizontal morality. Essentially, it's where does your morality come from? And I was fascinated when I first heard this concept, especially the way people reacted to the concept. You see, vertical morality is our classic liturgical approach to relationship. Be it fear, be it love, whatever with the divine as our motivation and ethics. It's a relationship to something larger that dictates our need to act morally, our system of reward and punishment. Horizontal morality is the notion that our ethics and motivation is actually in the direction of understanding that everyone deserves to be on this earth that your morals actually come from the observation of how your actions positively or negatively affect other people. And the argument is that if we focus on the vertical and accept that there's a power above us, that that means we would have the ability to visualize that others might be below us. And this is where they lost me. I don't think the crafters of this theological perspective had much interaction with the depth and beauty of our faith. Our tradition actually has us held in partnership with the divine, not rank and file. Our partnership is based on the premise that our love for the vertical dictates that we have to recognize and notice the, the horizontal as crucial. I believe our relationship with the divine, symbolic, authentic, whatever you might want it to have, is the motivator for the horizontal. We show that love for God by caring for the world around us. And we come back to this because our tradition actually shows this in some of the most basic tenets we teach our kids. The Kabbalists taught that the creation of the world was so magnificent and unequaled that it required a radical adjustment of the divine, that God had to shatter God's self in order to make space for the world. And in that, a spark of the divine went into every single living being. Here's the bridge for the theories of vertical and horizontal. With a spark in all of us, our interactions with everyone on earth, they are divine interactions. Knowing there is a higher power by no means have, means that we have the ability to see other people as less than. Rather, we now see everyone as elevated because that spark of the divine is in each of us. And this matters. You see, if we don't tend to our own light, if we don't recognize the light in others, then how are we actually going to show up and be in community? Next Tuesday, 
When you say the words of Kol Nidre, you're recognizing the same point. Kol Nidre is the vertical. One recitation of Kol Nidre and God has forgiven you from all the vows you're going to mess up on, but you need to take 10 days. You need to see people face to face. You need to address the actual issues that you've caused over the year, or you cannot achieve repentance from those mistakes. You have to look a person in the eyes, recognize their spark, and acknowledge if you did something to diminish that light. Martin Buber laid this out in his theology as well. At the heart of Buber's theology, anyone a Buber fan? Not a Bieber fan, it's close. No? Okay, well, there's the Buber. The idea that what matters is not understanding God in an abstract intellectual terms, but rather seeing everything as entering a relationship with God. Such a relationship, Buber believed, is possible only when we establish genuine relationships with others. The cornerstone of his philosophy was called I-Thou, denoting a relationship in which the subject, I, treats someone or something else as another unique subject, Thou. The unique subject of thou is divine recognition, an acknowledgement that both I and thou have a divine light. They both have to matter. Both have to shine bright because if they don't, they can't find one another. And if that happens, relationship fails. A hey, how are you without actually caring how someone is fails. And I know that might be difficult to hear because we do that a lot. We say, I hope you're having a nice day and then don't ever think of it again as if we didn't actually hope they had a nice day. We didn't think of it at all until we saw their face, said something quickly and moved on. That's a fail. Now we've looked at that with our most powerful sources. We've looked at our liturgy. We've looked at our text. We've looked at our philosophers. Now let's glance at TikTok just for a moment. There's this amazing account in which this man catcalls positive affirmations of kindness. Jeremy Padauer, you are a delightful human being. Dara Beer, I'm still thinking about the quiche from the last ECC meeting. Jennifer Scher, I do not know how you do it each and every day. Those kids are delightful. People are always expecting the worst when you talk like that. And that's the entire account. People expecting a moment of tension and then gifting them a moment of joy. Maybe you were shocked in the way I spoke. Maybe you weren't. Who knows? But his entire account is that hearing kindness about us is powerful. But hearing unexpected, uncontested kindness is even more powerful. I can feel some of you glowing a little brighter just from stopping for a moment, pointing it out. This idea is considered micro-affirmations. Now, you might have heard of microaggressions. This is the flip side, the side we should really be focusing on, micro-affirmations, the power of miniature moments that can create a ripple effect of confidence on this society. You don't have to be grand or throw a parade when you're proud of someone. In fact, that might be counterproductive because often we then stop and are challenged as to the merit of that affirmation. We stop and we question if we deserved it. This idea we're talking about, mitzvah, goreretz mitzvah. One good deed will bring another good deed. One transgression would bring another transgression. Your actions start a chain. Your actions matter. The ripple effect goes on and on. Every mitzvah counts. And not only that, when you carry darkness, when you carry pain, when you don't let that light shine, you risk passing all of that on too. When we're having a bad day, sometimes we accidentally let some of that bad day rub off on others. So we have to do what we can to add joy, to add that spark, to add that light into community. Without it, the world is a darker place. So let's be practical. How can you pull this off? Write a letter, say thanks. Let someone know you impacted them. Smile more. I can see the high cheekbones, the people in masks. Smile more. <laughs> Compliment more. Lend a handing hand. Open the door for people. 
recognize an accomplishment when you hear it, affirm the hard work of others. And honestly, the most important one, don't get caught up in the idea of being too nice. It doesn't exist. If you think people think you're being too nice, it's not a thing. If you're authentic and kind and true, it's not a thing. And you might be saying, Rabbi, okay, I get it. How are you spending high holidays talking about this with so many awful things happening in the world around you? Do these micro moments even really matter? You might be thinking. The answer, plain and simple, yes. You can't fix the problems of the world. They're not actually even your responsibility to fix all the problems in the world. And our theology has never said it is. You can, however, craft and shape ways to deal with the world around you. Mechanisms to confront the problems, put yourself in a space to best tackle and find solutions. If we can craft that space that is conducive for an entire society to address their problems, that chain of positivity has to start somewhere. And if we aren't putting positivity out into this world, how can we expect to receive it? I can't sit there and be upset with negativity and harshness. I'm not going to go out and do what's necessary to reconnect, to beautify, to enrich, to enlighten our community. I can't just sit there and be dissatisfied. You have to be the solution. You have to act from your heart. Let us all take the responsibility to be the start of that chain to turn the positivity up and it will never stop flowing and that light will never stop shining. At every moment of celebration in our tradition, we share the words of the Birkat HaKohanim. Brit milah, baby namings, bar and bat mitzvah, under chupah. I wanna share those words with all of you now and remind each and every one of you just one last time that our light matters and leave you with a charge to share more light. Our Birkata Kohanim is God teaching Moses and Aaron how to teach the priests and in return the Israelites. They have an ability to shine the light of God onto this earth. And if we don't nurture that light, how can it truly shine bright? The first verse addresses our relationship with the divine, what it looks like to each of you hold true to yourselves. The second line deputizes us to be a part of God's work, creating, certifying that partnership. And the third line encourages us to implement the partnership, to care for the world in our community. After each line of the Birkata Kohanim, we say the words, Ken Yehiratzon, may this be God's will. That reminds us that as we do this work, this work of the horizontal access of theology of caring for the world around us, we have a vertical divine endorsement and support from Adonai. May this be the holy words that will guide our behaviors and our love for the world. And may this blessing take us into our days of repentance. <laughs> May God bless you and keep you, hold you tight as a dear and loving partner. Ya'er Adonai pa'anav e'lecha v'chuneka May the light of God shine down on you and be kind and gracious and supportive to you. May you always feel that support, that relationship, that love from God because that is how the divine intended it. May that light of God emanate from you onto this world. Let that light shine brightly on the possibility of hope and peace. May a light shine forth from you and have the illuminating powers to make this world brighter for all who live in it. May you remember that every time you share that light, that heavenly light, 
that light of God, you are caretaking for the world around you. No matter how small an act you think it is, it isn't a small act at all. Sing them. Shalom. We turn to page 612 for the words of our grand Alenu. Do the doors stay closed? Closed? Okay. Ask you all to rise. Alleinu Lishabeth La Adon Hako La Teit Gedula Leotzer Bereishi Shenatan Lanu Torah Temet Vehaya Olam Nata Bitocheinu Ushina to Zob Gob Hey Miromi, who Elo Hey Nueno Vaana Nu Kori Ask Zach Shapiro to come forward. is open. We have our third and final set of shofar blasts on page 592. I again encourage you though, even though I told you the page number, ignore me, close your eyes. Truly let it pierce your soul. This is the third set. It's time to get out of bed. It's time that we know soon when we leave this room, the hard work begins. We have Tashlich at five. You have days now in your days of awe. It is time to do the hard work. Let this third set of the blast of the shofar truly allow you to be awake and ready to do this holy work. Repeat after me. Takiya. Teruah. Tikiya, 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 
Teruah. Tikiya. Tikiya. Teruah. Take one deep breath, all of you. Tikiya Gidola. We turn to page 672, the Sefer Chaim, the Book of Life. What does it mean for us to be the author this year? For us to be our best selves, to say, we will write out our names. Let God be the grand editor, but take some responsibility. Be the author this year. Don't take away your voice, your ownership, your authenticity in this moment. What will you inscribe in the book? And how will you walk on this earth knowing what's written inside? Page 672 are words of the Sefer Chaim. The Sefer Chaim, Beracha Vishalom, Uvarnasa Tova, Mizacher Venikate, Lechaim tovim, lechaim tovim, ulishalom. You may be seated. A quick few announcements. First, I truly meant it. The gift that Zach gave all of us to hear those blasts of the shofar, I hope you are truly awake and alerted to the work that begins now. Join us at 5 p.m. down at Tower 5 at Will Rogers for our Tashlich. We will again blast the shofar. We will cast our sins out by throwing the bird seed into the ocean. We'll start to recognize that if we don't pull up the stuff, if we don't take it out of the closet and acknowledge the things that went wrong, empty our pockets of the things that have gone down deep, then we're not going to do true tshuva. We also have a food drive that has begun. Last year, we gave 460,000 pounds of food to the West Side Food Bank. That was 370,000 meals for those in need. This is our 22nd year of that annual food drive. It will run from now until October 12th. To contribute, you can always ask again outside, but go to ourki.org slash food drive. This is truly a chance to put our ethics and values into action that change the world. Tomorrow, Tuesday, September 27th, you can join us for the second day of Rosh Hashanah here in our sanctuary, our entire clergy team. The service will begin at 10 a.m. on, and you can also watch online at ourki.org slash live cam. And then this is really important. We're in services. Next week is Yom Kippur. But then we're going to have a party. We're going to have a sukkah bash Sunday, October 9th at 530 
come to the sukkah bash. You're going to put a lot of work in between now and the end of Yom Kippur. You're going to deserve a party. So put it into your calendar and come and join us for a night of lulav shaking, a schmoozing. We'll have some hors d'oeuvres. It'll be delightful. If you have any other questions about the holidays, you can come up and ask me or you can ask outside. We are so delighted that you were here with us. We're going to end our services the same way we've ended services for so long, shifting into the words of Kaddish and then celebrating with these words of Osei Shalom. Our Kaddish can be found on page 1216. If you take away this notion from the sermon, one of those notions is that we have to be there for community, and one of those reasons is because we don't know what someone is wrestling with. I hope today was inspiring. I hope today begun your true high holy days right. For some of you, it's going to have brought up the loving memory of those who are no longer with us, the way in which they sang those same melodies, the way in which they prioritized this day, the way they shared their light with this world. So as you're holding thoughts of loved ones in your hearts, I invite you to rise at this time Share the names of those who you're remembering in this moment. Say those names aloud so as we say our words of Kaddish, we are truly praying and honoring all of them. I ask you to share the names at this time. Mary Rappaport. You say the words of Kaddish slowly, deliberately, we say these words joined together. We say, Yit Kadal, Yit Kadash, Shemei Rabbah. Be'ama dirach yirute v'yam lich malchute. V'chayechon uv'yomechon uv'chaye d'chol beit Yisrael. V'agala uv'izman kari v'imru, amen. Hey, Shme Rabba, Mivarach, Leolam, Olame, Almaya, Vit Barak, Vishtabak, Vit Praar, Vitraman, Vit Nase, Vit Hadar, Vit Halel, Vit Halal, Shme de Kudsha, Brechu, Laela, Laela, Minko Birhata, Vishirata, Tushbahata, Venechamata, Tamid Rambe Amab, Imru Amen, Hey, Shlama Rabba, Min Shamaya, Vahayim, Alenu, Vail, Kol Israel, Imru Amen. Ose shalom bim ramav, huya ase shalom, aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael, kol Yoshvei Tevel, bimru, amen. We will close out our services, but before we do, well, with my job. Matt Ross from our board of trustees has just sprinted over from Barnum, so I want to have everyone sit. He wanted to come and share some words with us. And then I promise we'll still sing a song and, and get out of here in time for some oneg. We got some challah and some wine. And some honey, I think. Thank you. <laughs> They're slow over there. And the traffic is terrible. Thank you very much, Rabbi Shana Tova, and thank you all for indulging me for a few minutes to talk about what let's poetically call the soul of money. Just take a moment and look around you. Just take in your surroundings. In fact, I'd like to just start with how you got here. Assuming you didn't enter through the Sudakov Jerusalem courtyard, you walked up the winding stairs from the parking lot and entered the Friedman family foyer. You passed the recognition wall, honoring those congregants who helped build the synagogue. Maybe you looked for your name. You entered the Mel and Laura Gutman lobby and walked by the Shurgan family chapel. You noted the Palermo Ravitch social hall. That was on your left. And you checked the names on the other recognition wall. You scanned the wall and asked yourself, is there any rhyme or reason to how these names are in order? Apparently not. An usher greeted you with a smile 
wished you a happy new year, and handed you a prayer book. And finally, you walked into the Gray family sanctuary through one of these three wide double doors. You've been inside for a while now, I know. And I'm sure when you came in, you noticed the light streaming through the intricately designed windows, the colorful mug and velvet carved into the southern wall of the sanctuary, and the familiar light blonde wooden floors and green pews. You're struck by how open and airy it feels, even as at the same time the space creates intimacy. You start to walk up the intentionally ramped floor as if you're already making an aliyah to the bima, and you look to the left. Do you need to borrow a yarmulke? You think of how many other heads that yarmulke has been perched on, and you say to yourself, eh, maybe not. So do I walk up the stairs and enter from the back? Or do I walk past the rug with the Lion of Judah emblazoned on it and stop and say hi to Daniel? You see friends and you see familiar faces, you wave, you hug. And finally, when you chose just the right pew, you seated yourself, you looked around and Took a slow, deep breath, which I'm sure you all would like to do right now. But you're with many of the most important people in your life, and you're here in KI. Now let me tell you a quick story about this place. On a Friday night, 27 years ago, my wife, Sari, and I were still new residents of Pacific Palisades and freshly minted members of Kehillat Israel, attended a once-in-a-lifetime event with this congregation. The Shabbat service that night didn't begin in our synagogue. Instead, we met across the street at the Lutheran church where services had been held while the new building was under construction. But on that night, after the service began, we all rose, the Torah was lovingly and carefully removed from its temporary home, and we all paraded as one people down the street to this spot and placed it in its new permanent home. On that night, we became the beneficiaries of all those who'd given their time and money, sure, but also their hearts to create the sacred space we occupy today. It makes you realize that we truly stand on the shoulders of those who came before us. We're the lucky heirs to their hard work, their generosity, and perhaps most of all, their vision. And I'd like to ask everyone here who took part in that project that built KI to please stand up and be acknowledged. Come on, I'm sure there's somebody here. Yeah. Thank you. Stand up. Their vision was so beautifully executed that a generation later, our sanctuary still fills me with pleasure and pride every time I enter. In the book of Exodus, as the Israelites are wandering in the desert, God tells Moses to have them build a tabernacle. Let them make me a sanctuary, he says, that I may dwell among them. Well, I don't know whether or not God really dwells among us. That's a matter of faith. But I know that when we enter this sanctuary, we aspire to experience something profound. It's hard to name or describe just what that is, whether it be peace of mind or understanding or some indefinable way to enrich our lives. But I think we share in some way that desire. This is not only our sanctuary, it's a place of sanctuary with all that word implies. A place of refuge, a source of peace, even a holy space. After all, we meet here for some of the most meaningful moments of our lives. Think about all the life cycle events we've had here. And think about all the Friday nights, the high holidays, the concerts, even the meetings. The meetings. Our youngest daughter had her baby naming here. Both of our daughters had their bat mitzvahs here. And I can close my eyes and see everything just as it was on those occasions. I see our family and our friends, and I miss the people who aren't here any longer. I see them in this special, stunning, sacred space. 
we're committed to ensuring that years from now, somebody else can stand up here and reflect those same sentiments. And to that end, I'm pleased and I'm so grateful to all of you to report that KI's finances are in better shape than they've been in years. We've weathered the worst of the COVID crisis, and thanks to the generosity of our members and to the dedication of our professional staff, clergy, and board, we've come through it stronger than before. Our financial position has even been buttressed by our largest single donation ever made anonymously to our endowment fund, which will help secure our future. I'm confident that the future of this congregation is bright, but there's an old adage that the time to fix the roof is while the sun is shining. I think that's in the Talmud. <laughs> Everything's in the Talmud. And so, my friends, it's time to do some work around here. As Chaim told me the other day, as we talked about making plans to revitalize our sanctuary, we don't put the ark in a closet. Otherwise, it'd just be a community center. Beneath this beautiful edifice, all is not quite as it seems. For example, the sacred ark that was constructed with such care and skill still appears from the distance to be as beautiful as ever. But I'll tell you a secret. The door on the ark is held together by Velcro. <laughs> What's more, these speakers that hang from the ceiling, they haven't worked in years. This rug, older than my kids. <laughs> the floors, the pews, and the walls are worn and scuffed. We have to build a new ark a new Bema, install new audiovisual technology, and generally give this wonderful space that Rabbi Daniel so lovingly calls a spiritual workshop, a facelift. In the coming days, we'll embark on a capital campaign to not only restore the luster of our sacred space, but to make it viable for the next generation so that our children and grandchildren and all the families who've never been here before will continue to enter this sanctuary and have that same sense of peace and happiness that we've felt for the past generation. Let's honor those fellow congregants whom we just acknowledged by pledging to follow their example. Please join this campaign by making or increasing your annual gift today. Every single one of us can do something and no gift is too small. And when we call on you to help, which is as inevitable as the sun rising in the east and setting in the west, please heed that call and join our campaign. Thank you. I know it's the end of the service, but to all of you, a sweet, healthy, and happy new year. Shana Tova, thank you, Matt. Thank you. To everyone, thank you, Michael Asher, for bringing the beauty of the piano to us for this service. Thank you to Julie Silver, who brings her voice and her guitar and her craft. A true thank you to each and every one of you, because I wasn't kidding when I said we waited years for this moment and you brought such joy and love into a space, and I hope you all feel it as much as I do. So we're going to end with music. No more words from me. Sing together. We'll give a couple chances. Sing together. Sing some songs. And then when we're all feeling that cup so full, let's go eat some challah. Yeah. Sound good? <laughs> Shana Tova, everyone. Hit it. <laughs> Sing together. Oh, say shalom bim romam. Who ya say shalom aleinu? They are one.
יעשה שלום, יעשה שלום, שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל. יעשה שלום, יעשה שלום, שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל. שנה טובה ומתוקה